So every day for the last, I don't know, two weeks before this even happened, see how I, I'm like, I need to mulch the potatoes, right? So that, look at that one, right? So that's the, so that they'll grow in the mulch and not underground. And I still haven't done it. And then look what I just saw. Like, look at this huge zucchini. I don't even know. That grew like in two days. My yellow ones aren't growing very good. <gasps> There's a yellow one. Can you see that? I'm going to see if that will grow a little bit bigger. And then there's another big one back there. Let's go get it. Even my potatoes that didn't want to grow. See, all that needs to be mulched. Huh. Look at that. Awesome. I'm going to have to let some of these go to seed. So we have seeds. What's going on down in here? The yellow ones don't want to grow as good as the green ones. Good morning and cool. Ah, uh, all right. So I got two zucchini. That was exciting. Uh, I forgot I ate that can of peaches, and I just I was outside eating it which is indicative of one of the things I want to talk about today. I want to talk about what I talked about yesterday. I need to go with that a little bit more. But first, you can see I'm getting uh, more tired. Last night, The dog, both dogs had diarrhea. So uh, whatever they ate and whatever I ate uh, was something different. But we were up several times last night. And... You know, I bring that up because not on my list of things to do, uh, one of the things I'm struggling with is, you know, I was tired before all this started. You know, the adrenaline has long since crashed, uh, and it's not being, uh, I can't rest enough to restore. Uh, I read one time that when you burn your adrenal glands out, you actually have to it takes them over a year to heal, and they only really heal in the presence of excess insulin. <laughs> uh, that's not going to happen right now. And so, uh, you know, I had my plan had been uh, May and June was to really focus on food and exercise and make myself healthy. And uh, so that's the second thing I want to talk about today is regret and priorities. Uh, I wanted to show you, I have two little iPods, and I actually was listening to an old audio uh, broadcast before. Uh, I don't know if any of you have watched that movie, The Book of Eli, but he has a little iPod after 30 years. I would believe the hardware, because I have one from 2006 that still works. I can't find it, but um, the battery is crap. I don't know how a battery would still even hold a charge more than two minutes at 30 years. If you know the answer to that, huh, then you have a business in the future. But I uh, was listening to what everybody was opining about. And I think, you know, what's happening is, uh, just to backtrack for a minute here, you know, I have been living what I call, somebody's here, somebody's, who's here? Can you say hi? Good morning. Uh, so, and she got in some nasty crap yesterday. So I had to use some of my precious water because I think it was septic. So I had to clean that off because she's not coming in with that. So that was, you know, an, another unplanned event. So just as a quick backtrack, you know, I've been living in a trailer in what I call in the dirt for over 10 years. It will be 11 years this August. I don't think it's August yet. And, uh, you know, most of that I had electricity and water on property. Uh, the last two years I had neither. So uh, I wanted to practice being off grid. And I, before I did that with this horse trailer, I uh, built out and, re you know, to make the front 14 feet livable, the back is not livable. So it leaks and it's, uh, you know, like a, it's all metal. So there's no insulation. So in winter I have 
a uh, full-time 22-foot freezer, and in summer I have a 22-foot uh, sauna. Thought I heard something. Still snake season. <laughs> it's plastic in the wind. So, uh, you know, that's not done, but in the process of restoring that, I became very clear, you know, there was something wrong with me. I was having something was health-wise was going on with me, uh, and I had no stamina. And, you know, I've been living pushed to the limits since then because being off grid is so much work everything is so much work and even on this property you know i've been here for a couple months now since uh, march march april may and we're still in june i think so uh three months or four months now uh, i don't have electricity or water in my trailer i designed it intentionally to be fully manual fully simple because my experience has been trying to negotiate power for your everyday thing is as much work as physically doing it every single day. But what happens is there's never really a rest. Like every day is hard with electricity and internet. I just want to make sure she wasn't eating one of the potatoes. <laughs> it's an empty box. Uh, every day with electricity and water on the property is still very labor intensive. You know, I still had to haul water if the heat water. I have to physically take the water out, throw it away. There's no drainage. Uh, you know, everything is a lot of physical work. Uh, I don't have refrigeration in my trailer. I have a little bit of a freezer, had a little bit of a freezer back there. But I, I, so everything was a lot of work. I cook everything. I don't eat processed stuff. It was very labor intensive, but I was trying to take that tiny window to feel better. But I'm sitting here, I'm exhausted. My left leg is barely working because I haven't been able to do my, my stretching, which if I don't do every day, I have uh, left foot drop. I have serious autoimmune problems and my left leg doesn't work. I'm dragging my left leg and the only way it works is when I do a stretching and exercise routine, which is very time consuming, which requires me to be able to uh, lay down and not be attacked by a puppy and not be attacked by flies or mosquitoes or wind. Or <laughs> uh, so, you know, I have a lot of limitations that I'm happy to work with, but the reason I'm bringing all this up is I'm thinking, you know, about regret and priorities. You know, did I, did I make a mistake? Uh, and, you know, with them, and at, at the same time, you know, as we were out walking this morning, I'm telling myself, yeah, but I still had to survive in the old world, right? I still had to do something that was a business. I still had to make money. I still had to respond to the rest of the world and function. So I couldn't just cut everybody and everything off because, you know, you don't pay your bills, you don't pay your taxes, you don't buy your permits, you don't shop, you don't fill up with gas, you don't go get propane, you don't do all these things, cleaning, organizing, blah, blah, blah. Then you can't function in the world. And those things are energy, physical, demanding things. But I was still kind of in my own little world. And so the mental and the emotional component was pretty minimum. Now, and this is where we're moving into what's been going on here the last few days, the mental and the emotional components are as if not more draining. Uh, and as a social worker, I learned a long time ago that, you know, when I was working with people, you know, 10, 12 hours a day, it was horrible. I was drained. I couldn't have relationships. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go anywhere. I was so tired. And I remember saying I would rather be physically tired than mentally and emotionally tired because, you know, physical fatigue usually means I've accomplished something. You know, mental and emotional fatigue are almost always abstract and they're almost always from the negative. And so they drain. And you need a lot of time and energy that's downtime to recharge but now we're in a push, push, push scenario. And so all three are high. Physical demand is high. Mental demand is high. Emotional demand is high with no end in sight. And uh, do I keep trying to battle it out with other people? Uh, where I said yesterday I'm using more 
uh, energy and resources trying to work with others, uh, balanced with the limitations on my physical energy and my physical resources, uh, which is costing me more by trying to do things all by myself. I mean, these are real things in a perfect world. In this world, I do not have the answer. You know, I'm just still in shock and awe that it's this messed up. Uh, you know, I knew it would be, but the reality of it is overwhelming me. And I'm trying to see where the time is at because, uh, again, I love doing these because it helps me avoid doing all the other stuff, uh, which, you know, is the physical right now is because there's been so much energy <laughs> doing other things. My physical world is collapsing. And I showed you, you know, the can because that's, that's my brain. My ADHD brain doesn't function in clutter and chaos. And right now, you know, she's tearing everything up. There's trash everywhere. Uh, I keep dropping things and just moving to the next project. Inside is out of control. And uh, the food that I made that went bad has spilled. And so that's in the cooler, cooler. Uh, in the pots, on the counter, on the floor. And, you know, and last night I was so exhausted. I'm like, just screw it. I will deal with it in the morning. Well, I didn't intend to get up multiple times last night and, uh, you know, feel even worse this morning to go get all that stuff done. And I don't have a choice. <laughs> Uh, and and I was as I was listening because I was I've told you I've already talked about this how negativity kind of feeds my energy and so uh, you know most people's content uh, in in the before world right the the before world the after world the before world was negative right it's complaining blaming pointing fingers you know I'm listening to other people's uh, opinions and beliefs and. Uh, they're all agitated. They're all pointing fingers at everybody else. Like, how do we fix it? But nobody's actually doing anything, right? If we had put all our energy and our resources into working together, we would have built food systems and water systems and community defense systems and community health systems and community transportation systems. All of this is super simple, super uh, obvious. People have been doing it since the beginning of time. But we wanted to just talk about it and point fingers and say, you should. And I've said this, and I will say this to my grave. If the people you love can't come together and pull their you-know-what together to get stuff done, why do you think people who hate you will change and all of a sudden do the right thing? I, you know, and, and so I know I understand all this intellectually, but this is the big emotional drain is living with the consequences of all this, having to make decisions that are insane and wasteful and stupid and, and unnecessary and uh, and how we filter. You know, that's what happened with, uh, I had coordinated with someone to go reconnaissance the, uh, yesterday. He thought I met the day before and his filter, we talked about it a little bit, but I got mad and walked off. His filter was how I felt about him. He felt insecure, and so he didn't come over and ask me why I blew him off, which I would never blow anybody off, but he doesn't know that about me. My filter was, what's the fastest point between point A and point B, uh, and how can I be the least disruptive uh, by him driving over here and setting the dogs off? I was just gonna walk away across the street he thought I was rejecting him because he couldn't come pick me up. Not a date, dude, but this is who we are. We filter through, I filter through function and strategy and productivity. You know, other people filter through emotions or insecurity. You know, other people filter through, I need to be right. Other people filter through, uh, I want to be in charge and everybody needs to do what I say. And if you don't, I'm going to kill you. Right? Like uh, some, I filter through, I am the victim and everybody's out to get me. Uh, I filter through, I am special and everybody needs to, uh, accommodate me. Uh, and I, I, again, I know all this, but the reality that it's happening in peak crisis, the difference is when I was in ER and trauma work and first responder work, 
those people are like me for the most part. They filter through productivity. That nervous system is that wired for danger I was talking about before all this started, that you move towards the danger, but you have to be efficient. You have to be decisive. You have to be specific. Uh, because if you don't, you die. And so that's the nervous system. That's the filter. And when you have a team, it's awesome. But in real life, we all have different strengths and weaknesses. We all have different filters. We all respond differently to crisis. And so when you're with people who aren't filtering the way you filter, it is horribly exhausting mentally and emotionally. There's no logic or common sense. And you can't surround yourself exclusively with people that are just like you because people like me who are super good in a crisis, I suck. Sorry, the mosquitoes are out because it's just a never-ending cluster, right? So I suck at organizing. I suck at keeping things clean. I suck at so many things. Uh, And because I can't work with anybody on those things all my energy goes into the stupid crap like now I have to go clean up in there I'm going to lose my mind but not efficient not functional not practical to spend my precious energy doing something that would take someone else 15 minutes it will take me probably three days so these are just things that go on all day every day I think my aghast at all of this is it's life or death right now and we can't shift out of our our ingrained personality our ingrained nervous system we are wired a specific way nature nurture is irrelevant it's just the reality of this here and this now and This is who we are. This is how we each respond to a crisis situation. Uh, And we all have to make decisions accordingly. And uh, so I'm trying to get the shift, right, from the intellectual reality that I thought, honestly, I thought, you know, because my experience with crisis is that people pull together. But that's not true. That's the hit victim, hero, perpetrator. Victims don't function in a crisis. Perpetrators take advantage of people in a crisis. And heroes want to save the day and are high functioning in a crisis. But only when they're working with the other heroes. And, uh, you know, we've been fed in movies that one man or one woman can save the world. And that is not real life. So anyways, uh, I just thought that was important to follow up yesterday because uh, I was just blown away that this is happening. And, and now, I, you know, I think I could just think myself through it a little bit. And so I have to make this, these adjustments. Uh, like I said, the physical fatigue is easy, I think, compared to mental and emotional fatigue. And I don't know how to recover from that when the crisis isn't ending. It takes a long time, and the longer the crisis goes on, the harder it is uh, for your body to recover, the more damage you're doing to yourself. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is physical demand, your body gets stronger, but mental and emotional demand, a lot of times it, it will break you. So this is when it's good to be a psychopath and you don't care what anybody else thinks and you don't have any feelings and you just function. (laughs) Not that I'm saying that's a good thing, but I can see the attraction right now. To not feel all of this, to not mentally process all of this, uh, to just be focused and directional and this is my plan and I don't care about anybody or anything. I'm just going to keep plunging forward. Uh, That doesn't build a good society, but it sure makes life a lot easier. (laughs) Maybe. I don't know. Never been a psychopath, so I don't know. But uh, I am... I I am just, you know, like, wow. So, all right. So the day is long. The good news is we have two beautiful zucchini, and uh, I'm going to take a deep breath because I used to say that all the time. (sighs) Ah. <sighs>
and I will see you hopefully tomorrow, which will be our next time.